take your time and tell me what you think. What is most probably or same LP, MP, and HP? We have not studied this, huh, by the way. We have not studied copper smelting. But suppose we have not studied this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We have not studied this, uh, Bhavna, uh, because uh, uh, this they have just asked. I don't know if there was. I'm just wondering, you know, because this uh, uh, sterilite, uh, if you know the issue in Tamil Nadu, sterilite power plant and people were fired upon. That was at least two years old. Uh, so the sterilite had a copper smelting facility. Yeah, Vedanta Group. In a place called Tutukodi. We call it as Tutukodi. In English, it's called as Tutikoran. So let's um, analyze of, uh, the uh, statements one by one. So when you say copper smelting, when you say copper smelting, how does smelting happen? Suppose you have copper. This copper is actually put in a furnace. Okay. And it melts it. So there is enormous amount of heat that is given to the copper. That is why it smelts. That's what smelting is. Now, what happens? The, there is something called as a slag that gets formed. Then there is one layer of the copper metal that comes out of the ore. Okay, which means what uh, do you uh, what do you mean in this? You mean to say that high amount of energy is, is being uh, produced. Now, this energy could either come from coal, okay, or it could be an electric arc furnace also. There's something called as an electric arc furnace. Now, leave aside everything, okay? Let's go statement by statement. They may release lethal quantity. Lethal means someone can die of carbon monoxide into the environment. Okay, carbon monoxide into the environment, which means technically this is to say that if there is a copper smelting plant, there should not be people around. It somewhat seems a little difficult. And if you have ever studied uh, copper smelting, you will always come across the word that the smelting happens in a rich oxygen environment. Either way, huh? whichever you study. So this statement is most probably incorrect. One is most probably incorrect. So I'll reject one. Oh, okay. So it's helping me to arrive at the answer. Anyway. Okay. So uh, I think this was one uh, uh, good, uh, uh, one good uh, way in which luckily, I just got lucky in this case, that one statement, because I've read somewhere that uh, the smelting happens in an oxygen-rich environment. That's number one. But suppose you did not know this. You start from uh, statement three. Okay, so three, as many of you rightly said, sulfur dioxide does get produced. There is copper. And if coal is used, the coal can also have sulfur. Sometimes uh, India imports what is called as a non-coking, uh, sorry, coking coal. Sorry, non-coking coal is for thermal power plants, coking coal. Coking coal is used in a steel industry. Okay, but as a form of energy, it can also be used for copper smelting. Though it is less, but it can be used. So sulfur, and that too they are saying may. So he is not very absolute about this. Way. May release sulfur dioxide. Yeah, so which is correct. Copper slag can cause leaching of some heavy metals into the environment. This is also correct because copper, when it occurs as a ore, along with copper, some of the other uh, uh, elements are also present. Like. Uh, like uh, sometimes copper and zinc, they come together. So it, it is uh, very uh, rarely found uh, separately. Okay, It is always found in conjunction with other metals. So either you got lucky just as I did by looking at the word lethal and then trying to imagine its consequence. Yeah, Or remembering the fact that the smelting happens in an oxygen-rich environment. Okay, Either way, whatever works for you, you go for it and you get option B. Furnace oil. Furnace oil. So it's basically about furnace oil. Okay, one is correct. It's part of oil. It is a product of oil refineries. Yeah. So one seems like a high probability, guys. Do you agree to it? 
furnace oil it says you know it is the name itself you know is an is a is an uh, and i'll also say maybe we have touched this in our class also i'll discuss that also so one seems like a high probability it can cause sulfur emission into the environment so it is a by product of uh, of uh, uh, of petroleum uh, refining so for that let me see if we have studied some thing about furnace oil uh directly related to delhi pollution sc asked all states and union territories to move forward with a ban on pet coke and furnace oil that the very last statement uh, interestingly we have used is furnace oil is a dark viscous residual fuel that is used for power generation yeah so one way is to arrive logically another way is to remember what we have studied in the class <clears throat> so answer d which is what many of you are saying all three are high probability blue carbon so either you know it or you don't know this but it is also somewhat guessable is what i thought good so if you guys are saying a then we'll go with it it is indeed a take some time to look at this question arrange it as low medium high probability <clears throat> Four, uh, one second. I'm going to just think about Arun second. Four is high probability. Um, four high probability. It's on tree trunk also. Hmm. One and four high probability. Most likely. Okay. Two and three is high probability. Three is high probability. So Shweta and Shaunli say three is high probability. Have you uh, looked at a picture of mushroom? For sure, you know it. It can grow on a, uh, I think, dead uh, plant also. It can grow mosses and lichens for sure. Because if you remember when we discussed ecological succession, do you recollect ecological succession? That picture. in which on the bare rock surface mosses and lichen could come so if you are not clear you know this is the right time to also refresh so that you go back hopefully we go back and do the same thing the logical succession yeah so in this if you look at this image do you recollect this bare rock lichen on the bare rock so clearly it seems that you don't it can grow in soil it can grow in uh, tree it can also uh, grow in uh, sorry it can grow in rocks it can grow on trees it does not require so mosses and lichen for me also seems to be a high probability now the only question is mushroom are most likely to be found surviving on surface without soil so the question here is most likely which means what he is saying what he is saying is among the four which of the ones are most likely means if you see a moss moss or a lichen 10 times you will find them most probably majority of the times you are finding them that they are not in the soil same with fern you know what by looking at all your answers to me also i am tempted to say all the four all of the above but the problem is all of the above is not in the option itself okay so let's start with that point which is it think that all of the above is not an option okay so now between these four if we have to assign weights among these four which one do you think by nature or by majority of the times they can be found uh, on a surface without soil yeah abhishek you are right abhishek i tend to go with sheta and uh, shaunli when they first said 2 and 3 i tend to go with 2 and 3 okay oh if i say 2 and 3 then it is only 2 and 3 fern is unlikely because fern if you means i am not an expert in botany but whenever i look at fern it's always a fern plant yeah it's a fern plant with with the soil so it's a tough that's why i said it's a it's a tricky question here 
if there was an option 1 2 3 4 or if there was an option 2 3 4 no i would have gone for 2 3 4 but 2 3 4 they have not given so i have to work around and see which is the most closest option yeah same here i have also seen mushrooms only on tree trunk now interestingly so i was not uh, really able to um, um, not really able to uh, judge or guess on uh, on this one yeah, it's a little uh, tricky or a messed up question or maybe the question center forgot to put the right option or something i also felt a little something amiss about this whole question it's difficult to quantify but when i looked at it i said nay yeah, something is missing in this question yeah all said and done but then you know upsc is upsc so we you know kind of go in front of them yes mm. large scale mushroom cultivation very true done without soil you seen corn growing between the rock at my home so what should we do vision jit singh should we write a representation to upsc if that help in any way i also agree but if there is an option 2 3 4 or all of the boy have been tempted to put that uh, but they have not given us that option yeah so maybe one of you when you become civil servants and you become uh, you know somebody in charge of the civil service examination of question paper you can uh, be a little more uh, empathetic to your your uh, juniors who are fellow aspirants yeah till that time this will go on <clears throat> i was also not very happy with the question itself because it is subject to so many interpretations but then chalo you know it happens life has its uh, share of uh, frustrations so let's move on to the next question and see what uh, best we can do primary producers so a conceptual question okay so this is a conceptual question food chain in oceans so basically they are saying which of them can come under phytoplankton one way or the other three is a high probability excellent so or uh, so okay so prachi and webber uh, and maybe uh, think abhishek also so the answer seems to be two and three but how about one and four Two is high probability. Very good. Cyanobacteria, right, Weber? Diatoms. I think Abhishek had already mentioned. So that's also high probability. So if we, if I look at two and three, then I can directly zero in on the question. But before that, we have to be sure about one and four. Any idea? One, one or four? I think we don't really have to worry because we are clear of two and three, and there is only one option which says two and three. Exactly. so anything on pod you know anthropod or this pod that pod they are crustaceans the one which have this shell uh, kind of a thing and i believe examples are there are so many examples of no, prachi uh, is it crab like or would jellyfish come under this i don't know i like, thought jellyfish also comes under this so so the answer is 2 and 3 guys huh? we'll stick to this answer and move on <clears throat> oh the answer is mentioned here sorry sir not me i have forgotten to add the animation looks like see in this was once again a question you know if we know we'll be able to give it here otherwise there is no way we will yeah one has spikes three has scales two lives in a burrow oh, so it can always run into the burrow probably yeah but uh, the pangolin we have discussed no By any chance, did we discuss anything on pangolin? Um, on which yeah, Indian pangolin and conservation. So we mentioned this. Interestingly, we mentioned this here. Yes, interesting. Pangolin curls up into a tight ball, exposing its scale to prevent attack by predators. Yeah. So at least three, we would have been sure that. Uh, um, Uh, three would have we would have been sure that three is there, and then we would have gone into fifty fifty. Yeah. So uh, if we knew or if we remember that slide, we would have we would have done this, and probably this would have been a fifty fifty question. Hedgehog would have been a 
uh, it would have been a tough one to answer because when I look at hedgehog, it looks more like a porcupine. Yeah, so it's a tough one, guys. Doesn't matter. It's okay. We tried our best. With reference to New York Declaration on Forest, which of the following statements are correct? So someone who has read the current affairs for that will be able to uh, answer this. Otherwise, no. Anyone wants to take a shot? I'll give you 30 seconds. A. Okay, five is low probability. Very good guess, Abhishek. Five is low probability at its inception. I think that's how we also, even if we don't know anything about it, we are probably putting it as wrong. So this removes me. So good. So it suddenly become a 50 50. So four for sure they are saying is there. But the only question, Abhishek, that you have to guess between one, two, and three, which one is correct? Yeah, legally binding. So is that a clue? Is that a clue? Okay. So if we say legally binding does not seem probable, then the only option is one, two, and four that Prachi has said, and the answer is indeed correct. Okay. Let's move on, move on to the next question. Yeah, this is a tough one. Take about a minute's time. Take about a minute's time. I'll just be back, guys. <clears throat> Oh, okay. So this question is uh, from a documentary, is it? Okay, interesting, Prachi. So for those who have not looked at the uh, looked at the uh, uh, looked at the documentary, how would you progress? Okay. So someone has already looked at it, like Prachi. Good for you, Prachi. But in case someone has not looked at it and wants to approach it in a generic way, so can you please uh, tell me your approach? And source for any question, Bhavna source, UPSC is the source. I think UPSC, when they make a question, they can, they have the entire world as the source. Yeah, so in this case, it may be a documentary, but in some other case, one will be taken from one source, another will be a current affairs, third will be taken from a textbook, 
so uh, i think uh, that is how it is great this is a tough one right how do you rate this question low medium tough i think it's kind of one of those question which throws you off and i'll tell you the reason why yeah it is tough uh, web out um magnetite okay so let's start with the basic and see if we can move from a zero probability to 50 50 even that is an achievement right so that in the second time when you come back you have you feel a little better okay magnetite particles which metal or what element are we talking about here magnetite have you heard of it iron good anyone has a different point of view iron okay so there is no opposition when prachi says an answer so that's correct iron is the right answer so you must have heard of uh, hematite and magnetite iron ores no yeah so somewhere iron so this is correct now with that knowledge can you somewhat move on to the next level which are all the options do you think potentially there could be iron okay all of them have iron okay all of them have iron that's fine so to that extent the answer is all of the above but which one has for sure has iron guys does one surely has iron yes one surely has iron yeah excellent yeah that is what i was also thinking uh, sheta one and two for sure has iron okay i know that even with a very limited uh, knowledge of science and technology i know one and two for sure has iron so which means what can i do at the most i can strike up this option then comes microwave stove within homes okay uh, it has iron body but it has so many other things power plant uh, power plant uh, magnetite so if something has to come out of power plant it can be only in the form of an ash okay because other thing what comes out of power plant if you look at the uh, by product it is only ash and uh, when i say ash both your bottom ash and the fly ash and the fly ash telephone lines you know my personal thinking was i thought i understood telephone lines reasonably well it has it is either you know like copper or aluminium at the max copper or aluminium so i was wondering that five so it is definitely not there i mean i'll tell you my approach five does not seem probable so i was very happy that the answer is this one seems good two seems good and four seems good but the upsc uh, key says all of the above so i had to you know kind of if anyone has a different point of view as arun was saying that the iron is found in all the uh, five uh, statements maybe that would have worked but in my case it did not work like that maybe very honest with you on that so i was very really happy to say are they have given an option 1 2 and 4 or so i went with 1 2 and 4 the areas where one could find uh, uh, a lot of iron for the documentary also says so is it okay <clears throat> so this was one tough one guys half all the questions that we have looked at it this was one tough one i felt so this is one thing in a factual question so either you know you will answer and let our science student not answer here both prachi and vishanjit okay most probably you would have studied this in your course so let others try this one which one of the following is a filter feeder whatever you understand from that have you heard this term before a catfish okay any idea what is a filter feeder bhavna says oyster okay not heard of this term not heard doesn't eat directly okay so how does it eat if it doesn't eat directly what do you mean by that bhavna means doesn't it directly i am uh, not fully able to understand what you mean by that so vishanjit singh is not able to control himself he said they have learned it in the class okay ha ah, absorbs from minerals in the water excellent excellent so you know three cheers to vishanjit singh's uh, memory i also remember we specifically discussed it in a topic when uh, we talked about dead zones do you remember dead zones ah here it is yeah this was a Uh, i think it was dead ha ah, marine pollution in that we talked about dead zone so shellfish such as oysters are filter feeders 
it so happens that we got lucky i mean it's not that you know we'll be teaching everything that is there in the uh, upsc paper but we just got lucky because i thought that this was a very interesting thing and how oyster and shellfish being a filter feeder increases the concentration okay when they do this in an area of uh, harmful algal blooms they have higher concentration of toxin i think this was the reason why we uh, talked about filter feeders okay so it can happen i mean i don't expect everyone to remember every single line in the ppt but this is where this drives home the point of revision so imagine like some of you said not heard obviously you no know, i i don't trust your sincerity you sincerely attend you also revise but perhaps that revision was not good enough for you to understand it fully okay so one kind of regret when you don't get an answer correctly is when you don't know the other kind of more painful regret is when you come back and see are this was there in the notes but still i got this question wrong that's a bigger regret guys so whatever limited you have read it three times four times till you feel very confident about it okay so answer answer is oyster so bhavna your answer is correct and your justification is also correct good guys <clears throat> Uh, in the case of which of the following bio geo yeah i think this we have we must be able to get the answer to this question i guess i may not have directly put it but it can be inferred either through elimination or through direct selection itself <clears throat> yeah prachi please go ahead i mean i am not putting restriction for every question only the last question i had put restriction because it was a you know flora and fauna based question c all of you say c excellent guys it is in, it is indeed c so if you look at it phosphorus phosphorus things wrong with the spelling phosphorus oh yeah phosphorus right so it starts with the statement earth's crust contains phosphorus okay the form of phosphates but that's a roundabout way weathering of rocks so earth's crust is there weathering of rocks so due to weathering and erosion phosphates enter river so why i am saying is i want to drive home the point you may ask you know where did you take this from so there is this uh, book uh, uh, source called as nios national institute of open schooling uh, a lot of things are taken from ncert but a lot of things are also taken from nios so all these four statements you no know, they are copy paste from nios the reason why i am saying this is this drives home the point that reading the basic book never goes waste one way or the other you will be able to connect the dots okay <clears throat> So answer is phosphorus. Detrivo. When we talked of food chain, we touched upon detrivo, guys. Okay. So let's start with uh, LP, MP, and HP. Which you think is LP, MP, and HP? See, there are some things which are very sure. Also, you can say what HP sir? Ah, earthworm. Earthworm is high probability. Absolutely. Three. Okay. Shawnee says millipede is also high probability. Good. You all uh, know what millipede is? Excellent. Jellyfish is carnivore. Super. Five is also high probability. Great guys. So one person said earthworm. Other person says millipede. Third person says woodlice. So we have one, three, and five. yeah yeah so that is your millipede black and red with a large number of legs it looks very what do i say uh, i think kids these days use a word called creepy my daughter has been using this word for quite some time so it looks creepy so to say. so uh, so uh, <coughs> jellyfish if you remember uh, jellyfish would come under carnivore or what we would call as uh, in the do you remember this this terminology do plankton in aquatic yeah correct mara attack correct you are right uh, very scary memories in camp in childhood also because when you play in the rain you no know, you don't realize that you know this one or two has you know crossed over your uh, legs actually very scary feeling though it does not really harm the very fact of seeing something moving like this is very scary so this is zoo plankton so the team says earthworm millipedes and wood lice that's what you have said One, three, and five. So there is actually an option one, three, and five. Is there by any chance can it be all of the above? Because we saw all of the above option for many of the questions. How many of you feel there is a small probability that it can be all of the above? In terms of yes or no, anyone saying yes or no? Small probability of it being all of the above. 
no arun says no prachi says no good guys so at least we are confident because jellyfish for sure is not a dietary boat that is my starting point and seahorse also prachi said so which means this is one of those questions if you look at the previous questions no many of them were all of the above yeah but then if you start thinking okay in science and technology or in environment when there is this type of question then it is all of the above don't spend too much time on that analysis no? that can be a little detrimental okay um in financial world no i am reading this uh, yeah too much zoology in 2021 you are right uh, prachi so it is going to help vishanjit singh so he is smiling uh, <clears throat> nicely so uh, i read i was reading this book called psychology of money it's a very interesting book by the way uh, what he says no when you invest in a stock market or mutual fund first thing what we do is we look at historic returns how has it how has the fund done or how has the stock done in the last 3 to 5 years yeah but as in any other aspect of life even in a financial market past is not an indicator for future past is not an indicator of future the same thing in case of upsc also i think that is a philosophy that they are trying to drill it, drill down deep into every aspirant's psyche yeah so there is this beautiful saying in financial world which says things which have not happened which have never happened in the past happen all the time it's so beautiful no especially in case of financial world things which have never happened in the past happen all the time in the future yeah so kind of a paradoxic seemingly paradoxical statement but i hope this does not come as a upsc essay topic or something okay <clears throat> let's move on to the next question so this is a direct factual current affairs question guys common carbon metric supported by unep has been developed for oh what okay i have also given the answer so no problem let's move forward so if you have read it you uh, in the current affairs you will be able to answer otherwise you cannot which of the following species can establish a symbiotic relationship with other organisms can okay symbiotic relationship with other organisms two is high probability correct i could also do only that much uh, so in case you guys are so oh, one and three are also high probability i didn't know that i also thought two is high probability this is two technical question guys in case you see something like this for which you feel you should have at least you know read the relevant parts of zoology well better don't attempt such question it's okay now if you look at it as a team if you look at it i think 7 to 8 out of every 10 questions we've been able to get broadly correct no? i think that's a good strike rate if you can maintain the same in the actual examination also <clears throat> so the answer in this case happens to be all the three so prachi you are right so he says two and you are saying one and oh okay okay that is how you are saying stuff man but for the generalist to know that corals uh, has uh, cnidarian members stuff i think yeah no problem so all those who are from arts and uh, other background you must be happy that even the engineers and science background the guys are finding it difficult to answer it okay so it's all the same situation for all as i mentioned in the very first class UPSC is consistently brutal to all. Okay, does not care who you are. <clears throat> so this again, I have given the statement. So it talks about once again a current affairs topic of UN Capital Development Fund and Hyderabad being recognized as a tree city and all. So it's a very factual one. If you have studied it, we'll be able to answer it. Otherwise, no. It's not one question where we could you know zero in on and get the answer. Hmm. This question is a good question, I think. Test the logic, and yeah, you could say somewhat logic, somewhat knowledge also, because I find of all the three, only two options potentially confusing. Two I could easily strike off. B Abhishek, okay. any other option which you think is confusing yeah a good uh, arun you are saying a because 
the first time when i read it uh, my confusion was between a and d b and c i was sure it is not yeah you are right any rational you want to provide uh, abhishek and arun why you have chosen the respective option means it could be read somewhere or some other logic any rational you have or uh, you read it somewhere yeah that is true arun it, it may have introduced it uh, 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 and it belongs to environment but what they are saying is nodal agency for implementation effective implementation okay but it can go either ways in this case yeah the answer is tribal affairs ministry of tribal affairs it is this kind of question that you have to be a little careful about where you feel two options seem to be fitting the bill so oh, man <clears throat> one second just one second any places have just not mentioned the animation like one second <clears throat> okay fix <clears throat> the animation issue yeah vegetation of savanna so same funda lp mp hp who will tell me four is high probability two is high probability the forest development in savanna is kept in check by one or more of combination of conditions so what they are basically saying is we all know that savanna is grass as well as some trees you know uh, spaced out very much okay it is some trees spaced out very much what prevents so basically what they are saying is savanna is grass plus trees the question is what prevents more trees to grow in savanna converting it into forest land that's the question okay so some of you are saying four seasonal rainfall okay two is true fire okay you say fire is high probability four low probability four is a low probability you are saying seasonal rainfall seasonal rainfall doesn't occur there So, what kind of rainfall occurs there, Arun? Uh, in according to you, in a savanna grassland, three is high probability. Okay, Shweta also says three. Why do you think uh, three is a high probability, Shweta and Vibhav? Let's go one by one. Three, why high probability? And uh, yeah, seasonal rain occurs. so we can also go back to our class and see if we can get any uh, any clue in that oh sorry do have skated trees so now let's start with what we have guys fire why fire because savanna is it's quite hot yeah if you remember the grassland that we have uh, discussed with the tiger picture of the tiger i think you should remember this one one step huh? yeah i think we are here about here this is a temperate grassland tropical grassland do you recollect this this picture 
See how dry this is. Very, very dry. Rainfall is there. Can be highly seasonal. Can be highly seasonal. Now, if the rainfall is seasonal, can a forest happen? If the rainfall is highly seasonal, yeah, it is limited to a particular point in time of the year. Can it produce like rainforest? Can it produce a, a thick forest? Yeah, monsoon is seasonal rainfall. You're right, uh, uh, Arun. You're right. See, generally, a seasonal rainfall is not something that you associate with the forest yeah, or growth of a forest. Okay. Which means forest development in such areas generally kept in check, in my view, also due to seasonal rainfall. I think. Yeah, but do we have an option two, three, four? Yes, we have. Yes. Yeah. But you guys need not agree with me or this answer key that is given, any other point of view you have? Any other point of view you have? See, one logic, you know, this burrowing animals and termites, uh, they can be in grassland, but they are also found in a big way in desert. But they are not the reason why the grassland uh, cannot become a desert. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? They may or may not be there, but they are not. See, look at the question. It says forest development in such areas is generally kept in check by one or more of the combination of following conditions. So forest condition, it is not due to this for sure. Yeah. So even if you look at it by this, you can, you know, strike off these two and then you just figure out what is the one that is causing, uh, causing the savanna from becoming a forest. It's a tough one. It's a tricky one. I agree. But you can at least convert it into a 50-50 type of equation. Okay. consider the following statements. So it's a broad sense of proportion that we need to have as far as water resources are concerned. One is wrong. Okay, Arun is confident that one is wrong. Two only. Okay, we have studied. Yeah, I think what was the topic? Water um, chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. I think we have um, studied this. Uh, let me not use this PowerPoint. Uh, you know, something like, you know, I would have said that there are 100 units of water, of which 97 is in uh, C. And three is fresh water. Out of this three, two is in polar ice caps. Do you remember? And about a little more than two, 2.4. Then 0.6 is your uh, groundwater. Do you remember this? Yeah, something like that, guys. Okay. <clears throat> so, in this, the answer is two. Now, please go back to the slide and refresh yourself. So this is environment. This is also economics question. Huh? They are talking of exports. They are talking of uh, yeah, primarily environment. But one point is about exports. So personally, this is one of the most nutritious uh, trees that we used to have in our house for a very long time. Oh, is it so? Yeah, actually, you are right. I don't know. Again, you know, if you say what is the source, I have no clue. Can someone try statement three, guys? Because to me, it looked like, you know, you could say yes or no for statement three. That is what I felt. Because others are a little going above the head. Yeah, seems to be yes for me also. Tamarind is one of the minor uh, non-timber forest producers, as they call it. Yeah, but if three is correct, all that I can do is I can strike off one option. Option A, I can strike off. Okay. Now we have to uh, uh, figure out what about one. 
the leguminous evergreen tree leguminous yeah so that is that was the clue i also think prachi one is a low probability i also tend to think so can't be a legume good thinking oh but if if that is there then i am able to get the answer directly no let's just wait for some time are we missing something so 3 4 and 5 minor forest produce india exports tamarind seeds of moringa and tamarind can be used in the product. yeah five also seems like a high probability thing five is a high probability thing for me yeah which means this and this both can be there so i even if i strike off this this and this both can be there then the question is between whether one is correct or two is correct two it says it tamarind tree is endemic to south asia oh it says endemic to south asia which means no one in the world can you find tamarind tree other than south asia it looks a little bit of a stretch no don't you think so because the growth of tamarind tree it can it's not a very water intensive or it requires a lot of care it can just grow anywhere yeah imagine africa i would imagine it very difficult to think that uh, tamarind does not grow in africa or for that matter certain parts of south america are you able to understand yeah they said south asia it's there in southeast asia also yeah so two for sure seems wrong so by that logic i think 3 4 5 5 okay so this is one of those question where you force yourself a little bit more no apply yourself for example you know the drumstick tree it's not a leguminous tree okay so i think these are the clues or you 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 know take a step back and understand can something as common as a tamarind tree be endemic to south asia seems very difficult to believe okay any idea so this is once again a direct current affairs question yeah in case you you know if you have read the current affairs you know it otherwise you would not answer is developing genetically modified crops yeah correct paper correct pol card correct so this is a conceptual question so if you have read the concept somewhere you will be able to attempt or at least narrow in the options better Four high probability practice of mulching. Yes, you are right, uh, Arun. Let me put this as high probability. Permaculture farming discourages monocultural practices, but conventional farming mono are predominant. This is also high probability. Yeah, exactly. So one and four high probability. Conventional chemical farming can cause increase in soil salinity, but occurrence of such phenomena is not observed in permaculture. I would say this is also high probability. This is the definition of perma. Means one of the inputs of uh, or the ingredients of permaculture conventional chemical farming is easily possible in arid and semi arid regions what do you think of this yeah 3 is what np means no probability yeah huh? is that your definition conventional farming i think the clue is this word here yeah? easily the conventional farming was so easily in arid and semi arid region you know It would have been a different story altogether, no? Yeah. But to me, three for sure seems incorrect here. Three for sure seems incorrect. So if we just remove three, and then we just said that oh, one, two, and four exist. So perfect, no? We got the uh, answer to this question. Palm oil. Consider the following statements. Consider the following statements with reference to palm oil. Is native to Southeast Asia. Okay, high probability. One you are saying is high probability. Okay, palm oil is a raw material for for some industries producing lipstick and perfume. No idea on that for me. Palm oil can be used to produce biodiesel. I think this kind of looks like yeah. I mean you know can be used. 
even though it is a it is a, a fuel part but it is saying can be used no? why do you say it is far fetched it can be used i believe yeah so i'll start with the one in which i am very confident about so i'll start with three three means i am able to strike up only one option three is medium probability maybe for blending mm -hmm. i understand what you're saying because you're saying it's not a seed and all that so that's fine again southeast asia so we are saying between bc uh, palm oil is a raw material for some industries producing it. yeah if you look at it when we were young you know, means uh, when i was studying uh, in uh, maybe 6th or 7th standard so we always used to have this quiz competition land of thousand lakes land of rising sun in those days okay this like 25 years back in those days the land of palm oil was originally nigeria nigeria was called as a land of palm oil then but now if you google land of palm oil you don't get nigeria because there are so many countries like malaysia and indonesia which are producing a lot of palm oil okay what he is asking is palm oil tree is native to south asia okay native means it originally belongs to south asia i think this is a big 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 googly yeah native to south asia He is not saying endemic. He is saying native to South Asia, which means originally it was in South Asia, then it spread elsewhere. Yeah, exactly right, Bhavna. I believe it is native to South America and to some extent Africa. Yeah. So, uh, so I think when I looked at this question, the statement one appeared like a big googly. Yeah. So, uh, so which is where the answer is also two and three. So sometimes it happens, yeah. So, you know, um, uh, uh, it can um, it it can create confusion because if palm oil means Malaysia, because you would have studied in economics or some other aspect that you know Malaysia is one of the large and Indonesia are two large palm oil producing and exporting countries. But he is asking of palm oil tree, so it's a very bad ugly, I think. Uh, but the, that is what it is. Okay. So we just have two or three more questions. Let's finish it. Huh? Sorry to keep you waiting here. With reference to Indus River system, the following four rivers. Four. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is geography, guys. I mean, uh, if you look at our uh, Indus Water Treaty, we discussed Indus Water Treaty, right? In that, there was a map. Please have a look at the map. Please have a look at the map. Okay. And you'll figure out. And please uh, don't forget. Have a look at the map. There, it very clearly says which river goes and connects where. Yeah. So you'll find that the answer is Satluj. any idea on this question global ocean commission grants license for seabed exploration india has received licenses for seabed mineral exploration rare earth minerals are present on the sea floor in international waters why is one wrong bhavna ocean global ocean commission grants license is the organization wrong or are you saying they don't grant license other organization okay organization is wrong what is that organization that grants license have you come across this term called international seabed authority Discuss may have discussed it. After one second. Oh, <clears throat> one second. Um, yeah, here it is. International Seabed Authority. Regulates activities. So this was deep sea mining once again, which we discussed under marine pollution. Yeah, perfect, guys. Right? International Seabed Authority. So we got it right. Uh, so one is wrong. So the moment one is wrong, the good thing is three options go away. 
This is the advantage of knowing the facts very well. Because when Bhavna said that one is incorrect, this is as good as she is saying what the correct option is. Because if you are sure that one is incorrect, the only option that stays is option B. Yeah, sometimes you can get lucky. You know, by striking of one, you are able to directly come to the answer. Rare, but it is possible. Yeah, I think this you will be able to answer. Least water efficient crop, which means output divided by exactly output of the crop divided by amount of water that it takes. In the context of India's preparation for climate smart agriculture, consider the following statements. Okay, so this is once again we're asking about a specific project and the organization. Yeah, so all organizations are important, but this IcreSat keeps coming in news now. Just have a watch on IcreSat in general. Okay, this option we all agree are correct. Yeah, I think we are in the last two or three questions, I guess. What forest is this concept? They have asked a lot of conceptual questions also. I am pleasantly surprised in 2021. So always remember when I told 10 is for uh, concept, 40 for biodiversity and 50 for pollution, global warming and climate change. 2021 seems to be very different, guys. A lot of questions on biodiversity. It looks like maybe 50% of the questions are biodiversity, as Prachi was saying. And maybe 25% was is on concepts or application of concepts. Oh, two of you, both of you are saying D. Anyone? Litter decomposes canopy, uh, canopy superb. Good. So in case someone has any uh, difficulty in what, what we are discussing, first it says leaf litter decomposes fast. So when, when will something decompose? You need high temperature and high moisture or humidity. Okay, so this dry will not come. Okay, someone may think perhaps mango because it is temperature and moisture is high. Okay, coniferous will also not come because high temperature is required. Soil surface is almost bare. Apart from trees, vegetation is largely composed of plants at up to the canopy. So they reach canopy. So canopy, the moment you see canopy, you can cross mango. And growing epiphytes, if you remember I said that your tropical rainforest is either tall trees or you have plants that grow on them, epiphytes. Okay, so these are all the uh, points through which you can uh, reach the right answer of tropical rainforest. With reference to street lighting, we have not really discussed this, I think. Uh, maybe in one of the government schemes, I just touched upon some of the features of LED way back, maybe in the first or second class, but we may not have discussed it so specific, doesn't matter, let's start, let's let's attempt to at least classify the statements as based on probability. Okay, one is wrong, okay. Sodium lamps have longer lifespan than LED. This for sure is wrong, no? This for sure is wrong. So now the only option that you have is A and C. Significant color advantage. So uh, coming to first statement, if you stand under a sodium vapor lamp, no? yeah, you can do this uh, experiment also. Stand under a sodium vapor lamp, see if there is a shadow that is produced. If shadow is produced, means the light is concentrated, means it is not 360. If the shadow is diffused, then it means it is 360. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Just go and stand near a sodium vapor and go and stand near an LED. Okay, in both the cases, the, okay, let the person stand here. If the light makes a shadow of this person here, then it is not 360. Why? Because it is a little focused. If the person stands, but the shadow is very, very weak, means it is it, it, it will appear as if there are two, three shadows, then it's an indication that it's a 360 degree light. Now, with this definition, can tell can someone tell me sodium vapor there is shadow? How about LED? Huh? 
how about led actually led is known for sharper shadows correct that that if you are confident about third you go with third i was more confident about one okay so i uh, kind of uh, you know decided that the option is c yeah so go back and uh, and find out uh, that the led ones are the ones which have uh, a stronger uh, or a more direct kind of a, right, a light okay but the color advantages of led is better color advantage of led is better this is a tough one i feel tough one unless uh, any one of you has seen this in current affairs when you wrote in 2021 bisphenol a which of the following kinds of plastic so within plastic they are asking which kind of plastic bisphenol so the answer seems to be b polycarbonate yeah i could not get this answer once again you know i am sure this would have come in current of this triclosan is most likely present in which of the following yeah anyone wants to try i think this is the last question d good guys so d is the right answer